Hello, friends. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about some backlist fantasy books that I'm interested in reading. So partially I can get your feedback. Partially you guys can give me suggestions on where to start, if I should or shouldn't read them, who I should prioritize, things like that. I feel like I don't prioritize backlist that much and that's okay. I don't plan to switch to prioritizing backlist. I truly love reading like current new releases. However, when those current new releases aren't quite hitting the spot, then I feel like it's time to resort to backlist fantasy. So that's kind of what I'm hoping with this video is to have a source for some recommendations of some books that will suit my taste and possibly yours if the thing's being released. If you're kind of like just like in a slump, you know what I mean? Like you're a little bit burnt out on the writing style and magic and sort of like quickness, you know, of the fantasy releases that are coming out these days. And so I have dipped my toes for sure into a lot of backlist fantasy throughout my years of reading fantasy. I know what I like. I know what I don't like, regardless of what you like and suggest and think I will like. So the list of books I have today is primarily backlist fantasy written by women. There's one book on this list written by a man because I've started it in the past and I would like to continue on with it in the future. Um, so we'll get to that later. And then also, hopefully you guys could give me some suggestions for backless fantasy written by men that could possibly suit my taste. And then I can give you guys those answers so that if you have reading tastes similar to mine, you guys have a resource as well. So I have seven books or I suppose series slash authors written by women today and then one written by a man. So let's just get into this list. A couple of these, I know which book I'm going to start with and a couple I don't because they're just, they have so many expanded series and books to choose from that I don't even know where to begin. Okay, so the first one being Robin Hobb. I know I have read from Robin Hobb briefly in the past and then I fell in love with the Live Ship Traders trilogy, but she is a backlist author that I plan to go back and read. Everything this woman has written to the best of my ability, I mean, I don't even know everything she's written, but my plan is to go back to Assassin's Apprentice, which is the first book in the Farseer trilogy. This isn't going to be shocking to you guys. Everyone knows to read Robin Hobb, so I won't spend too much time here. I have tried and DNF this book at least two to three times in the past. And I don't know why, but sometimes I do this as a reader. I DNF books and then later on they become favorites. So The Live Ship Traders is already a favorite trilogy of all time at this point. So I think I can trust my taste now that I will enjoy going back to uh, Assassin's Apprentice and Farseer trilogy. So this was first published in 1995 from my understanding. And I'm really excited to get back to hopefully falling in love with Fitz as, as much as everyone else and just more so her character development and world building. So I don't know, The Realm of the Elderlings, I don't know what other books that Robin Hobb has outside of the Realm of the Elderlings series. Maybe that's all she has. I don't know. We'll find out together eventually. I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments, but that's where I'm going to start. So Robin Hobb is like number one on this list of backlist female authors. I do plan to read Assassin's Apprentice coming up within the next couple of months for sure. The next one that I'm also going to read this month, you guys will have seen on my TBR, is from Mercedes Lackey. So I'm going to start with the Herald, Heralds of Valdemar trilogy. Um, I own that bind up now and she herself has said that that's a good place that you can start with. So book one in that is Heirs of the Queen. I don't know what the full trilogy is, but I have the bind up of the trilogy so I will be reading all three of them back to back. I believe that this was first published in 1987. So this is even older. And I also believe it it's more like young, like it reads kind of young to begin with and then you grow older with the character, which sometimes I really like that as well. So it follows the adventures of Talia as she trains to become a herald of Valdemar in the first book in this classic epic fantasy Arrows trilogy. Chosen by the companion Roland, a mystical horse-like being with powers beyond imagining, Talia, once a runaway, has now become a trainee herald destined to become one of the queen's own elite guard. For Talia has certain awakening talents of the mind that only a companion like Roland can truly sense, but as she struggles to master her unique abilities, time is running out. 
for conspiracy is brewing in Valdemar, a deadly treason that could destroy queen and kingdom opposed by unknown enemies and capable of both diabolical magic and treacherous assassination. The queen must turn to Talia and the heralds for aid in protecting the realm and ensuring the future of the queen's heir, a child already in danger of becoming bespelled by the queen's own foes. So I have a lot of faith in this author just based on people that I have heard read it in the past that have similar like fantasy tastes and specifically about like sexist worlds and stuff so I'm really hoping to enjoy it this woman has five million fantasy books so it is very hard to know where to begin she has so many books but she herself said you can start here so I'm gonna trust that and I'm gonna buddy read it with some friends in discord and I'm really excited about it another one that I really would like to prioritize reading this year and a couple friends and I wanted to read this together that is Jani Wirtz and she also has a lot of books and a lot of books I think in combination with another author maybe um I, I'm not totally sure I haven't researched that much but my friends and I were thinking of reading The Curse of the Mist Wraith which is Wars of Light and Shadow number one. And this was first published in 1993. So I think that's also older than Farseer. And I don't know, once again, like where the best place to start with Janie Wirtz is. I've heard that her writing is very dense and you definitely have to take some time to get used to the writing style. But like I said, I'm saving these gems for when I need them. So when I'm sick of like current fantasy that might rush through things and it's not as well developed and you're not getting the characterization and you're not having the the time spent I think that's one of the biggest differences between modern fantasy and classic fantasy is they're so rushed and things aren't as well fleshed out and explored so I think that it will be a good thing I think to ride hell's chasm is another one that's really popular by her so I don't know if there's one place or another that I should start but this says the world of Athera lives in eternal fog it's skies obscured by the malevolent mist wraith only the combined powers of two half-brothers can challenge the Mist Wraith's stranglehold. Arathon, Master of Shadow, and Lysir, Lord of Light. Arathon and Lysir will find that they are inescapably bound inside a pattern of events dictated by their own deepest convictions. Yet there is more at stake than one battle with the Mist Wraith, as the sorcerers of the Fellowship of Seven know well. For between them, the half-brothers hold the balance of the world, its harmony, and its future in their hands. Sounds interesting to me. I don't have any idea how long the series is. I mean, it might be a trilogy. It might be 17 books. As far as I know, I haven't looked into it. Um, one of the hardest things for me about Backlist Fantasy is I am a book collector. And so I really hate that you can't get all of your pretty matching editions, but we have bigger problems in life, so it's fine. What next? Okay, there's a couple. All of the rest of these four women are kind of like up in the air of where to start and if I will really enjoy them. So a book that I absolutely always see and I think is like, you see it on like classic fantasy romance lists sometimes, like OG fantasy romance. And that's by the author Jacqueline Carey. And it is Cushiel's Dart. I think it's Phaedra's trilogy number one. So, I mean, you guys have all seen this book in the bookstore. I've heard like of some of the themes and like content warnings of this. I'm hoping that because it's written by a woman, it's handled really well. This was first published in 2001, so this isn't nearly as old. And I've just heard so many mixed things. It's a very long synopsis, so I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it says set in a world of cunning poets, deadly courtiers, heroic traitors, and a truly Machiavellian villainess. This is a novel of grandeur, luxuriance, sacrifice, betrayal, and deeply laid conspiracies. Not since Dune has there been an epic on the scale of Cushiel's Dart, a massive tale about a violent death of an old age and a birth of a new. So I didn't know there was going to be that little line about Dune in there. So um, I don't like Dune used as a comp thing. But uh, I mean, that sounds pretty grand and pretty epic. So I think it's a little bit darker in tone from what I've heard. I would love if there were some like newer editions of these because like I said, like I'm just really not a fan of the old covers, but you know, we, if we're going to read it, we're going to read it. So that has a pretty good average rating, actually. I would say out of the ones I've listed so far, Robin Hobb has the highest and then Mercedes Lackey and then Jacqueline Carey and then Jannie Wirtz, as far as for like the specific book that I've clicked on. So that's Cushiel's Dart with Jacqueline Carey. I don't know how many books she has, but this is the most famous one I've heard of from her. Another one that I put on my list forever and ever and ever. Every backlist book TBR list I've ever made, I've put this book on. And I had no idea it was a woman author this whole time. So that is Black Sun Rising by C.S. Friedman. 
Cold Fire Trilogy number one. And I, I love this old cover, actually. I'm not going to lie. So this was first published in 1991. It has the shortest synopsis ever. It says, on the distant world of Erna, four people, priest, adept, sorcerer, and apprentice are drawn together to battle the forces of evil led by the demonic fae, a soul-destroying force that preys on human mind. So I don't know why I never prioritize this because even that synopsis being one sentence it is so gripping compared to a lot of the synopses I read for books that come out recently. So I don't know why I haven't ever gotten around to it. Let me know if you guys have read this and think that it's worth picking up. I love the cover. It sounds good. Even if it sounds like something I've read before, I'm really curious about it. So there is C.S. Friedman. One more author that I'm curious about is C.J. Cherry. And the book specifically that I got from a Reddit list is Fortress in the Eye of Time, which is the Fortress series number one, first published in 1995. This says, deep in an abandoned, shattered castle, an old man of the old magic muttered almost forgotten words. His purpose to create out of the insubstance of the air from a shimmering of light and a fluttering of shadows. That most wondrous of spells, a shaping, a shaping in the form of a young man who will be sent east on the road the old was to travel. A haunting story of the wizard moral, kingmaker for a thousand years of men, and Tristan fated to sow distress between a prince and his father being. A tale as deep as legend and as intimate as love, it tells of a battle beyond time in which all destiny turns on the wheel of an old man's ambition, a young man's innocence, and the unkept promise of a king to come. I mean, it sounds really interesting to me. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I like how that synopsis sounds. I know that CJ Cherry has like a million books as well in sci-fi and fantasy. So I would love to hear from you guys where to start. What's your favorite? Do you prefer the fantasy or sci-fi from this author? I would love to know. And then the last woman is another woman that I have read for. And that is, of course, Ursula K. Le Guin. So because this is a fantasy-based backlist list... I want to focus on her fantasy. So I have a Wizard of Earthsea. I have read like almost all of this in the past and it, I read it in the time that I first read the Lord of the Rings trilogy and rated it like three stars. Cause I just like, you know, you, you start out as a reader and sometimes you just like don't fully understand. By the way, the Lord of the Rings is now my favorite fantasy trilogy of all time, but I just think it has a lot more promise. I'm not expecting it to like blow my mind. I know it's very basic like sorcerer fantasy, but I'm still very curious to remember more and, and learn about it. Ged, the greatest sorcerer in all of Earthsea, was called Sparrowhawk in his reckless youth. Hungry for power and knowledge, Sparrowhawk tampered with long-held secrets and loosed a terrible shadow upon the world. This is the tale of his testing, how he mastered the mighty words of power, tamed an ancient dragon, and crossed death's threshold to restore the balance and this was first published in 1968 so this is by far the most classic and oldest on this list but I still think I would like to get to it and this is a really good average rating I think just because it's her classic fantasy and then last but not least on the list is a uh, classic fantasy written by a man like I said I have almost finished this book and then I set it down for something else and never went back to it and that is Tad Williams. And so the book that I read before is The Dragon Bone Chair, which is Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn book number one. And this says, a war fueled by the powers of dark sorcery is about to engulf the peaceful land of Austin Ard for Prester John, the High King, lies dying. And with his death, the Storm King, the undead ruler of the elf-like Sithy, seizes a chance to regain his lost realm through a pact with the newly ascended king. Knowing the consequences of this bargain, the king's younger, bro younger brother joins with a small scattered group of scholars, the League of the Scroll, to confront the true danger threatening Austin Ard. Simon, a kitchen boy from the royal castle, un unknowingly apprenticed to a member of this league, will be sent on a quest that offers the only hope of salvation, a deadly riddle concerning long lost swords of power. Compelled by fate and perilous magics, he must leave the only home he's ever known and face enemies more terrifying than Austin Art has ever seen, even as the land itself begins to die. So this was originally published in 1988, and I did have a good time with it when I read it before, so I want to reread the portion that I've read, finish it, and then I think it's a trilogy. From my understanding, it might be a trilogy, and I know that he has more in the series as well, like that he's been publishing recently, I believe. Hopefully I'm not wrong there. So that's seven backlist 
fantasies written by women and then one written by a man. So eight backlist fantasy books that I hope to read at some point. I'm not going to like prioritize these all in the same, like these are going to be spread out few and far between just because backlist fantasy does take a lot more time and commitment in my opinion, usually than um, modern fantasy. And so I want to like savor these and read them just when the time is right. So I would love for you to give me your feedback on these books. And in order for me to create a part two, where I am talking about backlist fantasy written by men, which there are much, much more books to choose from, <laughs> obviously. By the way, if you know of other backlist fantasy written by women that I didn't include, please tell me because I would love to know. But in order so I can make the part two, I don't want backlist fantasy books written by men in extremely sexist worlds. Like I, I just don't. That's not bad. I'm not mad they're there. I'm not saying they shouldn't be created or shouldn't be a thing. Um, I'm not anti-sexist worlds. We live in a sexist world. I'm not anti like that. Um, it's just the life that I've lived. I prefer to not read something that's like too heavily focused on that in the world. Like I can choose to read from anything. I don't want to read about a world where women are nothing other than like concubines, wives, like cross, like I just, I want there to be some sense of equality or just not to be a big issue in the book itself. Doesn't have to be like female led by any means. But yeah, so if you know backlist fantasy written by men that's not overtly sexist, then let a girl know, okay? And then I'll help you guys all out and make a video about it. So let me know what you guys think about these books. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. I've been